You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa visited today the Bahrain Defense Force BDF's general headquarters. Upon arrival, His Majesty was welcomed by the BDF Commander in Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, Minister of Defense Affairs General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi, Chief of Staff General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi, and senior BDF officers. His Majesty was accompanied by Royal Guard Commander His Highness Major General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Majesty held a meeting with senior officers and discussed the BDF's development plans. His Majesty affirmed Bahrain's solidarity with and support to Sudan and expressed appreciation of the tremendous efforts exerted by the chairman of the Military Transitional Council, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah Al Burhan, to boost the security, peace, and prosperity of the Sudanese people. His Majesty the King praised the strong fraternal stances of Sudan and its permanent keenness on joint Arab work and on supporting security and stability in the region. His Majesty expressed appreciation of the Sudanese armed forces and their participation in the Arab coalition to support legitimacy in Yemen, wishing Sudan steady progress in light of the tolerance and fraternity among its people. His Majesty expressed pride and appreciation in the BDF's patriotic servicemen, reaffirming Bahrain's pride in the brave BDF men who maintained the kingdom's civilizational march and national unity. The BDF officers congratulated His Majesty on the advent of the blessed month of Ramadan, wishing Bahrain many happy returns under His Majesty's leadership. His Majesty tasked them to convey his greetings and congratulations to all BDF members on this blessed occasion at their various work sites, wishing many happy returns to our beloved Bahrain and the Arab and Islamic nation. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa also visited the BDF affiliated Royal Guard, where His Majesty was welcomed by the Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Major General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and several Royal Guard officers saluted His Majesty the Supreme Commander. His Majesty was briefed on the Royal Guard's important duties and its development plans. His Majesty then headed to the firing range where he witnessed highly pre precise live ammunition firing and military exercises implemented by the Royal Guard Service Women, which affirms Bahraini women's efficiency in all fields.
The trainees and participants in the shooting greeted His Majesty and took with him a commemorative photo. His Majesty the King hailed the military cooperation with the United Kingdom, especially in the field of training. His Majesty thanked the Royal Guard Commander, Major General, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, and all the Royal Guard affiliates for the efficient performance of their national duties. His Majesty the King praised the brave Royal Guard affiliates for the continuous performance of their noble duties along with their fellow BDF units participating in the Saudi led Arab Coalition Forces Operation Restore Hope and providing humanitarian assistance to the Yemeni people. His Royal Highness uh, Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa directed the services ministries to cooperate and coordinate among themselves to deal with the effects of the recent wave of rainfalls in Bahrain and to define the sustained damages and put forth solutions so that the citizens or traffic are not affected. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed the Ministry of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning to define and survey the most affected areas in the kingdom and report to cabinet on the measures taken in addition to its procedures to ensure that such damage is not repeated in the future. His Royal Highness stressed that all matters pertaining to citizens must be the focus of ministries and government agencies, and all efforts should be made to quickly assess the gathering of rainwater during the season while developing solutions for the future. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Libya Palace the Representative Council's Human Rights Committee headed by Council Member Abdullah Dawadi. His Royal Highness highlighted the Kingdom's achievements in the field of human rights, emphasizing the importance of developing these rights by the government and the Representative Council, asserting the efforts should be united towards the benefit of the homeland. His Royal Highness also expressed pride in the democracy that is represented by the people's representatives, affirming the joint responsibility for realizing further achievements for the Kingdom and its citizens. He continued to state that the government has exerted its efforts to provide the people with the best services, noting His Royal Highness's keenness to personally follow up on citizen satisfaction, citing it as an approach that establishes human rights. During the meeting, His Royal Highness welcomed the Representative Council's Human Rights Committee and hailed the role of the Council's members in presenting the true image of human rights in the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Royal Highness noted the responsibility of the committee in actualizing the values of freedom and the respect for human rights as a fundamental axis of the democratic process. The Human Rights Committee expressed pride in meeting with his Royal Highness the Prime Minister and lauded the approach adopted by His Royal Highness in preserving human rights through democracy, partnership and integration in government work. They praise His Royal Highness's keenness to provide citizens with the best services in an atmosphere of security and stability, commending His Royal Highness's care to all issues raised by citizens, noting that such approach reflects the highest degree of respect for human rights. 
The Shura Council held its weekly meeting today, presided over by its chairman, Ali bin Saleh Hassalah, in which the council approved a draft law on public cleanliness, which aims to fill the legislative gap of cleanliness regulations and devising means of handling, transferring, and disposing of waste. The session began with informing the council on the letter of the Representatives Council Speaker on the regulations of registration and safety for small vessels, on supporting and qualifying people with disabilities, and on draft laws regarding the civil services law. The council was also informed about a proposal regarding the establishment of a medical center for transferring and transplanting human organs and referred it to the services committee. Within the framework of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to protect the civil peace between the Bahraini people and its segments to ensure social peace and in accordance with the duty of the legislative authority to preserve the society's integrity and safety, as well as its legislative and supervisory role in maintaining the fabrics of society and its tolerance, cohesion and stability, and in light of the serious violations of social networking to the ethics of the Bahraini society and its constants and values and the prevalence of infringement and the appeal and abuse of beliefs and defamation and abuse of families, in order to preserve the society's entrenched right to freedom of expression guaranteed by law and the Constitution, which cannot be infringed under any form so as not to slip into society in the midst of strife and division and inciting hatred and spreading the spirit of destruction and destructive influence on institutions and groups or sects, the spread of rumors and fabricated and false news and the preservation of the rights of innocent citizens, 35 representatives appeal to all groups of society, its institutions, entities and individuals, and all writers, journalists, media professionals and social networking sites to abide by the principles of Bahraini society, the freedom of expression, the constitution and the law, and to avoid what divides society and spreads among its members discord and strife. Tolerance, pluralism and acceptance of the other contribute to advancing the society and country through the freedom of expression committed to by the spirit of the law. The 35 representative council members also demand that all state officials, especially those in charge of the judiciary system, to their national role hold accountable anyone who violates the law and threatens the civil peace and publishes false and fabricated news in order to preserve the safety of society and its tolerance without prejudice to the right of society. And the exercise of freedom of opinion, expression and criticism in accordance with the provisions of the law. The deputies stress the need to preserve the rights and the reputation of individuals and respect for constitutional and legal institutions and entities and to protect and maintain social peace, establish a spirit of tolerance and pluralism and not leave it until a dangerous slide may threaten peace and tolerance.